buddy Lester. How you doing, buddy? Stick around, man. Stick around. Give us a minute, man. We'll be right with you, pal. Lester Gold is a good guy, eh? Uh-huh. One of the next whole thing. Oh, by the way, we're giving away a prize today. Yeah. We're giving away a prize today. Let's Hi, Carol. Out. Okay, hey. Okay, we are live. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Tilly and Billy Show. I'm Jonas with Billy. I'm Billy the Green. He is the blue chipper, by the way. I won't forget that. I didn't mention that yet. I don't think I did. Uh, you, we are at the Quarterback Sports Bar Grill on Morton Avenue in Scarborough, just north of Eglinton. 14,000 square feet of fun, most standard playing equipment, great food, home for the Canadian Football Championship, June 11th. Book your party today, 416-757-2265, or go to thequarterbank.ca. All right, that's a good spot. Also, we are on... Where are we? NSS, buddy. Don't forget about that. All your favorite sports coverage, go to nextsportstar.com. Twitter, Facebook, get or get the NSS app today. Okay, okay, we're going to talk about a little hockey here, Billy. Tomorrow afternoon, the Maple Leafs can wrap up this series against the Bruins in six games. And if I recall correctly, show the Swiss team. trying to say who did it <laughs> I guess that must be me maybe you did no, yeah. maybe a lot of people did you know what uh, uh, I, you gotta you give this these teams credit they play well they made the better team uh, the, the teams have been really, really good for each other they've been well matched in terms of offensive chances they've been well matched in terms of uh, shots on goal they've been well matched in terms of hits uh, that surprises a lot of people and those who, who felt the least were tough really risk for the occasion. You know, there's some things we can look at in this series that, that may have been, you know, turned out for us. One, make, you know, the, 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 the play of Freddy is the game very good. The play of the defense, they've been spectacular. A healthy defense, you know, we knew going into the series that they finally would be healthy at the end of really, maybe times for the occasion, I guess. Uh, great stats, we can talk about those. Uh, but also, game three. Game's winding down. The Leafs are clinging to a one goal lead. Mitch Marner blocks about three shots. Sprawling, blocking shots. I mean, that, had, that was a big inspiration. At the end of the game, you know what normally when, at the end of the game, everybody comes in and mobs a goaltender because he's won the game. Everybody got off the bench and mobbed Mitch Marner. You know what that is? Well, it's a, it's a, it, it, it's a, it's a. Ask the Greek what it is. What is it? What it is? You know what it is? Toughness. That's toughness. That's toughness. That's a version of toughness, putting your body on the line that the Greeks been calling for 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 God knows how long. And just to and just to see a smallest guy on the ice put himself out there like that makes 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 me want to fall in love. Makes me want to believe. Makes me want to get on board. And the minute I get on board, till you know what happens. I'll tell you what happens. I get disappointed again. Uh, who's a little younger, is dating a woman, right? So give you give you an example. By uh, 6:30, we're having dinner. You know, I'm scared about what's going to Don't worry, it's going to go somewhere. It's going to it's going to get there. By 6:30, we're having dinner. Everything's great. Planning the future. Just everything's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. By 8 o'clock, the Greek, because he was a former gambler, he wants to pick up the TV and watch a little sports, right? right. You know, what am I going to watch? National Geographic. So, a well, little, little dissension. So by 10:30, I'm looking around. You know, I got my eye, uh, I got my eye on, on the TV, and uh, I turn around. Oh, you, you love sports more than me, and it. So wait a minute, honey, man. You just give me a minute, you know. So we argue a little bit, and then by uh, by about 1 a.m., I'm the greatest again. By 8 in the morning the next day, she says it's over. I want to leave. And I'm just like, this is the Leafs. Like for you to understand the Leafs, I never understood her. I think she was bipolar. For you to understand the Leafs game to game, game one, there's a the, the, uh, it's a hockey contest that that was uh, straight out of Quebec at Junior, where there's no physical contact. Game Two is a war. Game three, both teams play. Game four, Freddie lets in six. Game five, they're playing like the mid '90s Devils. You can't breathe. You see, where the hell did this team come from? No momentum in the series. Can't predict what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day. You know. And, and again, the Leafs are the Leafs are like not only my couple of my exes are predictable, but it's like I don't know, like ten year old kid, like you know, you fall in love with them, and then a minute later it disappoints you, and then five minutes later, like I get 
sick watching the league game, and you know, I don't have that many screws left, you know, you've leaked over the years, right? First five minutes, I said, you know what, I'm excited. Then I get disappointed again. Then I get excited. They got me all over the place, man. I don't know, by the end of this series, man, I I don't know, my mental wellness is taking a hit. Well, I'll I, I tell you what I, I've seen in this, in this series from the big places. And it's a team that I, I was hoping to see, and, and it's a team, I, in, in a sense, I expected to see, which is why I think we win this game. It's a team with a lot of talent that's using their skill. It's a team that's well coached, despite what some people may think. I mean, it's a team, you know, they, they had to make some adjustments after game two. They did. But you know who else made adjustments? The referees. They started, you know what? They started calling the game. That, that game two was a disaster. The one thing that good, one good thing that came out of game, game two, and I know a lot of people are, are, uh, are in disagreement over this one, Nazem Kadri. Okay, Nazem Kadri stood up for his teammates, yeah. even though it wasn't, it, you know, it, 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 perhaps some people will say maybe detrimental to his team. Me, I, I don't say that. No, so, because I, do I. I think his replacement on the third line, William Nylander, has done a great job. And that's a surprise, too. Okay? <laughs> the, way just, the, the way the Willies start, played. Right? No, no, the way the Willies played. The way the Willies played. The way the Willies played. Let me tell you how Willies played, okay? William Nylander, plus two. You know who's got a better plus minus on this team than Wayne Munt and One player. Or sorry, two players. Morgan Riley and Hainsey. Yeah. Have a better plus minus on this team than William Nylander. What does that tell you? That means that William Nylander is being responsible on both ends of the ice. You saw him in that last game hustling back to break up a play in the defensive zone. He's being, he's so what playing. you're telling me, so what you're telling me, basically. No, no, wait, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on followers too till you here man don't worry guys let me get a word in here. okay yeah. so what you're telling the Greek and our audience is that William Nylander who held out half the season is being paid seven million dollars a year has uh he's maybe, earning it hold so, on. He's earning so you're what you're telling me is he's he's raised his game to, to uh, what would amount to uh, uh, an average NHL -er. so you're telling me William well, come on what? I wouldn't see I wouldn't see I would come see. on Look, I'd say, uh, you, oh, you got some here. Okay. I was going to say that this is not an average NHL. This guy's got a lot more skill than an average NHL. You know all what? I want, all I wanted to see from William Nylander is, is, is some spark, okay? And some of, uh, some of his, uh, some heart, really, okay? And we're seeing that. Here's what I, here's what I see, and, and, and again, uh, just to just to watch just to watch Willie again, and, and I think to myself, I think to myself, this guy actually. Uh, I don't care what you say, man. My eyes tell me differently. I don't care about plus minuses. I don't care about that. I see a, I see a guy who's like a feather. I see a guy that the Leafs don't need. I see a guy they can win without. I see a guy that they were better first of all for half the season when he was gone than when he's come back. Regardless of what there he does in game so five and game six. All right, but the point of the matter is, this guy actually had the audacity to go into a, to go into Dubis's office. Hold a franchise hostage and ask for more money than David Pasternak. In what world, in what world, man, in your world, in what sports guy's world is William Nylander a better player than David Pasternak? You're okay, telling me, hold on, you're telling me, William, you're telling me, William, you're telling me, William, neither sticks. His agent asked for Pasternak money because it was based on statistics that had that you had come going into the season were comparable. This season is a different ballgame. Pasternak's got 47 goals with it. Hey, you know what? There's more statistics. There's the eye test, buddy. Well, there's the eye test. Now, man. But also, i got to tell you something else. You're William Nylander, right? You're William, William Nylander's agent. What are you going to do? Go in there and say, oh, no, give us five, give us five million. No, we're happy gonna, with that. He, Go ahead, give us five million. We're happy with that. Until he said, hold on. Hold on. Every penny you can. Hold on. Welcome till, to the real hold world. On, hold on, Tilly. See, I come here, you know, because you know everybody tunes in for the Greek. See, I come here and I say, hey, Tilly. Yeah. You know what, buddy, man? It's not cutting it. I mean, the Greek needs a, a, a couple more hundred to come here, man, and put on the button down and educate people, right? What are you going to tell me, Tilly? You're going to say, you know what, buddy, man? You might want to stay at home, take it easy, and uh, Brian will fool him for yeah, whatever yeah, the case yeah, is, yeah. right? So the point of the matter is this guy can ask for the, uh, yeah. the stars, the moon, and the sky. It's 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 stupid to sign him to that contract. I don't yeah. want to talk about yeah. Nylander. This, this, We're this, in the middle of the playoff time. Yeah. I'm talking about Willie on here. I don't know why you might have brought that argument. No. Just don't don't get me started. I drink coffee. Okay. I don't want to drink CC. Enough about, All right. enough about Nylander. By the way, Nylander's playing great in the playoffs. He's playing solid. Okay, great might be overdoing it, but he's playing solid. He's being responsible on both ends of the ice. And that's what the, that's the least going to be up for. He's a, uh, he's a plus two among the forwards. Not, not one forward has a better plus minus. Than Look, you want to come a hold on. Forget about no, Willie. 
Listen, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on now. Hold on, I've been listening to what you're saying. You came on here three days ago, dude. Three days ago, you came on here, and you did exactly like this, if I remember. I, I have a lot of brain cell shot, but I got a few left. He came on here, and you said you want more from Willie than the one hand. Right. Right? So what you're telling the audience, what you're telling me, is that one game made you change your no, mind no. because he played no, a no. decent game. You know no, what, Tony? I said no. We need more from Willie than the one hand. But he's doing more than that. All right, he did more for one right. game. And, right. All right. He's done more for one game. He looks. He looks for one game. Let Sixty me minutes. The, what, is, what my point is is that, is that Nylander and everybody else is buying into this project. That is my point. He's a different player than he was before the play. He's a different player than he was he's before when you were player. playing. But you no, were calling him I out. said William Nylander has to do more than so the you one handed check. Out. Guess what? Next game, he does more than the so, one handed check. So for he six gets minutes. back and he breaks up a play on defense. Yeah. But here's right. what I love. He's a plus two. Hey, look, the look, look you, you, I don't know, but I've seen your eyes. you got high blood pressure. Take it easy. You've got to calm down. Here's what I'm getting at. He did that right, and I'm not going to take that away from him. But you know what? Game to game, game six, you know what? He no. might be invisible again. Right? right. You know, the, we're, we're, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Don't, you're not, not, you, but the whole thing is, is you're getting locked into Willie really Nylander. No. And we're getting away from the oh, whole no. point here. But here's the point. If you want to come on here and tell me, because I've, I've, uh, I've questioned a lot of the leaves, a lot of the lack of toughness, some of the characters, and one of the guys that... You're getting that, high blood pressure. Right. That's right. And I'm, what? I, I gotta, I gotta give credit where credit is due. The Hainsey uh, and Zaitsev were one of the uh, were one of the main reasons. In my opinion, Hainsey and Zaitsev are the weakest links in the Leafs. But when Hainsey and Zaitsev played like they did in Game Five, held the Boston power play off the board. Hainsey played the best game that I've seen him play all year. And when he plays that kind of game, you know what? I'll be the first to see it. Now, that's a one-off. Can you play that in Game Six? Can you play well, that for Billy, another ten me, games? Excuse right? me, excuse me, but we're in Game Six. Going tomorrow, yeah. at least from three two. And anything. What are you complaining about? Here's what I'm complaining about. Here's I'm not. I'm not complaining about nothing, Tilly, except the unpredictability of not only the series. Yeah. Right. There's no momentum. Yeah. Would you agree? Back and forth. Nobody's won. Right. This is not over. So no, 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 no. what I'm getting at, what I'm getting at, and what I'm wary of is the is the uh, you. The instability and the unpredictably, the unpredictability rather, of the Toronto Maple Leafs from game to game. If they bring out the same version of Game Five and they check like that and they hold Billy, Billy. hold on. Yeah. But you're not listening. Hold on. No, I know where you're going with this. It's clear where you're going with this. Yeah, the point. The, they come out like they did uh, in, in game, the game two. If they come and out and like it's, in game and four. what I'm telling you, and yeah. what I'm telling you, yeah, it's very I'm, possible. It's, it's very. very it's that. more likely yeah, than not. Like Have they they're, constructed two good games in a row together? Listen, yes or no? That is? It's coaching, though. No, it's, it's, it's advantages. It's youth. It's, it's unpredictable. It's coaching. No, it's, it's not. It's matchups. It's putting certain players with certain players. It's the Bruins make, maybe make a mistake, a mistake by changing their lineup. Have the Leafs played two good games together? Have, have the Leafs played consistently two games back to back together? There's, they, a, there's a lot of factors here. You know why they haven't played two games back to back? Because Bruce Cassidy has done a good job All right. of redefining the matchups. So how do you read them? You talk about matchups. How do you redefine them in Game Four when the Leafs had them in, in Game Four when the Leafs had them up two one, right, to strangle hold on the series? What, what matchups came into play there for the Leafs? to come out flat and for Freddie to give up five. There was no matchups. He got out flat, man. Right? What happened was, is, is Cassidy rechipped his line. He rechipped re his line. All right. Pass on a so, line because so, he got past on a couple. What happens? Pass on a guy's two goals. Yeah, you rejig the line. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And they they there, you re you rejig the lines. Right. But no matter what the opposition does, rejig the lines. Put pass back there. I understand that. I've seen it myself. But the bottom line is, if you have the tech, if, if you have the, the werewolf ball, you win that game regardless. You bury him regardless. So what I'm trying to tell you, what I'm trying to tell you is game six. Anything goes. Anything goes. The Leafs, right. the Leafs right. can come out. The Leafs has a young and I club. Won't, I won't, I won't uh, argue that. The Leafs can come out and lose 7-2. Do you believe that? The Leafs can come out and lose 6-2. I find that hardly a highlight. You remember 93? I would, I would tell you something like that. You remember that. 93 when the Wings played? Hold on. When we went into How the... How can you compare the Wings of 93? I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. The Leafs of 2000. Because I'll tell you. you if you let me, if you let me talk. Yeah. I'm letting you talk a lot. Wings, Wings of 93. Remember game 5? 
Tonight we went into Detroit. Polino scores late in the game. We Detroit. Detroit was the favorite at that time, much like Boston. But we won Game Five. Remember? And we came back into the Gardens. Game Six. Remember? Everybody thought we had Detroit by the balls, right? You know what happened? Detroit won seven two. What I'm getting at is Leaf fans should be optimistic. But given the unpredictability that the Leafs have shown and lack of consistency, no, it's not just the Leafs. It's, 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 it's playoff hockey. It's hockey. Period. And I, we've been talking about this from, from, from the outset. Yeah, but what I'm getting tell you right now, you you take whatever you think is going to happen yeah. in the NHL playoffs and throw it out the window. What do you? Because nothing is predictable. You cannot no. even pick momentum from game no, to game. No, no. And, and that not only not only from game to game in, 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 in the NHL, but one of the reasons the Leafs, other than the matchups, one of the reasons that the Leafs do not have the consistency I'm looking for from game to game is because, in my opinion. They have not yet arrived. It's a lot of young kids from game to game, emotional swings. They have not yet arrived. They're on the process to build. They're they're inconsistent. Hainsey looked great last game. Game two, he looks terrible. Game six, he might look, who, who knows? That's the beauty of it. But I would caution Leaf fans, I would caution Leaf fans that anything can happen in game six. Anything can happen because all I've been hearing is that you're getting the parade right. No, 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 Billy. We're getting the parade right. I, I, I don't know where you're hearing that from because you're not. I'm hearing it. I'm not hearing it from you, Joe, but I'm also talking to all the people right, that right, are on right. social media, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and, and uh, I've talked to a lot of people on social media who said the Bruins were going to win the court. They, I mean, but let, let, let's talk about what's really happening here. Yeah. The Leafs are in a great position. They put themselves in a great position. As a team, they are growing. Yeah. As, I, a youth, as a youthful group, no doubt they're learning it. game by game by game. It's a different team than we saw last year, and a lot of that is because right. we have some different players. Yeah. We have guys like Jake Cousins. Mark, we have guys who's like it, who played Barra. Who was it? Who's one of the best players on the ice? You know, went in game one and game five. Not coincidentally, both yeah. Leafs wins in Boston, right? right. Jake Muzzin was the best yeah. defenseman on the ice. Hainsey played good through game five. Yeah. And nobody better. Hainsey is, 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 the, is, is the least talked about guy. And without, I've talked about him and I've thrown him under every bus in the city. He's only got one point in the series. Yeah. But, but he's, he's got a plus five. Yeah. He's got a plus five. He leads this in the entire series. Nobody's going to Let me ask you a question before you get going there, right? I'll set you up to get going. I'm reading what you're doing. Where's Boston most dangerous? If you have to pick on the power play, right? So, if you're most dangerous on the power play, right? The we're the least most dangerous. Yeah, but but the, here's the difference. If you watch the games five on five, Leafs dominate Boston. Even the most ardent Bruins supporter would say five on five, Leafs carry the play seventy percent of the time, right? right yeah. So as a Leafs supporter now, right? The most important thing that's required, game six and moving forward, especially especially if, if it happens to the seven, is Boston's only dangerous in one area, the power play. So who are the two most imperative players that have to come and show up if it's a penalty field game? Zaitsev and Hainsey, down low, down low. Because if you watch the Leafs, the way they pressure Boston at the points, they want to they try to dump the puck quickly. Once it gets down low, it's Hainsey and Zaitsev and Anderson as the last stops. And Hainsey, Zaitsev and Anderson were the we're three of the better Leafs come game five, and if they're not three of the better Leafs in game six, and there's penalties in the game, you don't want to take penalties against the Bruins, man. You want to give them five you shots. You don't take penalties against the Leafs. Yeah, but here's the difference, Philly. The difference is in terms of special teams. I don't want this a special teams game. As I said earlier, uh, if, if, if we're playing if we're playing a game that's... Uh, the Leafs are in better shape than this. Yeah, you don't want a special teams game. Yeah. So, the MVPs in game six for a Leaf victory. You know what the Leafs will win? If you see at the end of the game, Boston's 0 for 3 on the power play. If Boston goes 0 for 3, 0 for 4 on the power play, there is no way in hell they can win that game. They can't find scoring in any other ways. We can go 0 for 4 today. Uh, what's the matter with the uh, Facebook? Shut up. Oh, come on. Really? Seriously? Okay. So we just have to take a break here. Somehow the Facebook shut off. Yeah, shut off. Just brought it back to I don't know what happened. It's just said feed dead. Okay, so we're, uh, we're back on live on Facebook here. Yes. Okay. okay. Sorry, technical difficulties. I don't know what happened, but yeah. somehow we got kicked out. Uh, make sure you stay away from those buttons when you put it in there. These buttons here. Oh, Pat, it's back live again. Okay. Yeah. There you are, Kelly. Get in here. Was that off? I don't know. I, well, who knows? We, we excuse you for that. We're just in the middle of where we're we? We're talking about we're talking about and Yeah. Do you agree? No. I, yeah, I mean, two key parts. But it, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of. There's so fundamental. Factors. There's so many factors, Kelly. Yeah. But fundamentally, Boston goes over three or over four on the power play, right? Yeah. 
unless it's a one nothing, two on one of those funny games, right? Boston goes over three on the on the power play. You keep Pasternak, Bergeron, and Marshawn off the score sheet. How the hell is Boston gonna win? Boston wins under those circumstances, one and nothing, right? So that's what you gotta do. Saitsev and Hainsey gotta play game six, like they played game five, and everybody but, else the yeah, same and, way, and, right? You know what? You know what? One of the, one of the, one of the things about this game is the way this game is being called. Are we back on board? Okay. One of the things that bothers me about the way this game is being called is that. Uh, uh, it's the Daniel Shark is a lot of black people, two handers with a stick, cross ticket people in the back. Now, I mean, listen, this guy is a six nine guy with with a lot of with a lot of with a lot of with a lot of muscle behind. Right, right, yeah, it's right. not a and he's it's hammered, not a lot. No, he's hammering guys in the back, and the rest of you don't look at this from day one. Here's what you're, but here's the deal. You know where he's hammering out, Kelly? And this is where if you and and you've been around long enough to know, right? He's hammering them in front of the net right in the front of the net in the dirty areas. Like if he's playing that same game in open ice or in the corners where he's more visible, right? Both to the referees and the general audience, right? Because the cameras don't see him. We see him after the replays with the stick work, right? And the referees the same way. The referees, stuff that happens in front of the net, in front of the scoring zone, the war zone. Right. Referees don't call that stuff. Even on us, they don't call that. Now if Char goes and sticks guys in, in the corners, yeah. it's a different story. So right. we let that go. That goes both ways. But you, but you look at the way the, the penalty is called the place. That, 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 Trip by his eye. I, I, no, 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 no. You know the Greek calls it down the middle, Tony. If we're gonna talk about that, then we gotta get right to right to um, every art and brood supporter that's gonna tell you, me, and all these nation that was goalie interference. It's hard to argue. When you see that play, what do you think? You, okay. You're trying to tell me no, it wasn't? No, I, I, I believe, I believe that it may have been a bit of goal, there may be may have been goalie interference. I'm not gonna say it all. But here's what I also think. I think that, that the, uh, the the officials on the ice saw the play, saw it unfolding. Saw the pass from Muslim to uh, to Matthews and realized he's not gonna get he's him. not getting there. But here's the but he's deal. Not making that but here's the anyway. You're so why take that goal? Okay, away? here's where you're mistaken. Uh, let me not mistaken, but here's where you have to factor. I don't want to ever say you're mistaken. I respect my own. When uh, when the, the irrespective of whether he's got time or not, because you know what, frankly, he had as much time as the two nothing goal, right? You see, the two nothing goal was wide open. That was the same play. He wouldn't have got there. But the point of the matter is, irrespective of the shot, the, in the rule book, Greek, Greek does this kind of stuff when he's off camera. It says specifically, you interfere with the goalie. Doesn't matter, shot open, that this, that, the other. The goal should be waved off by 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 league mandate. By league mandate, if there's interference, that goes waved off. Perspective if, if Ross could have gotten there, right? There's two, but there's two things I want to point out. Okay, one is the, the on ice official said there was no interference. Okay, so now they go to the war room and they look at it. The war room has to prove in their minds, convince, they have to be convinced in their minds that the on ice official is wrong. The on ice official is right on the play, right there, that he's wrong. Okay, well, I, they did not have conclusive evidence in their opinion. Did you want well, right, to I, 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 I want to take you to the next game, Calgary. Okay, against Colorado. Similar play, only this time, the on official said there was goaltending after. They went up to the war room. It looked like there Hold wasn't, that, but man. listen, it looked like there wasn't, but there was, but, but the on official called them. So they didn't overturn it either. What they're doing is, in the war room is they're giving the on officials a little more responsibility, and I, 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 I agree with that. If you were, if, if, if it was the other way around, if it was the other way around, same situation, and Freddie got blocked, you'd, be, be, you'd be quiet, right? Over. All Leaf fans would yeah, be, yeah, including yeah. yourself, would be crying murder. Now, let me ask you another you question. Thing, a good team. A good team. Bounce over back. I got you. Right? I understand, but you know what? Let's just call it Let's just call it like it is. Let's call it spade a spade. That that was goalie interference. Leafs kind of break. And you know what? And you know what? To win a cup, to advance, you need to catch breaks. Leafs were the better squad. They caught the break. Bruins had eight minutes to yeah. capitalize and get even. They didn't do it. They didn't do it. Let me ask you another question. Now, a little off topic. Where... In Toronto is the is the uh, is headquarters for the uh, for the referee for the uh, video review. Yeah, where is it? Do you know? I don't know where. Do you know, know where it is? You're not likely. To you know how you, you know how you can find out? I'll tell you. You follow up. Terrible Teddy. Terrible Teddy. From what I heard, right? There was this. I was driving around. I see this Bruins guy terrible outside. Terrible Teddy's of the, one of our five. Jersey and was sitting outside with goals shouldn't have counted, man, the poor bastard. He's been, he's been sitting out there since, man, you know, so in any event, man, those are the breaks. Leafs kind of break and then by end, um, 
in the end, it was uh, it was well deserved. We're gonna we're gonna we're not we're not leaving the Lake Lakes yet, but I, I do want to get some of our uh, sponsors in here. Uh, Carriage Street Cleaners, like a spa for your clothes, eco-friendly, biodegradable cleaning products and packaging, gourmet coffee, including lattes, cappuccinos, same day service on 932 Simcoe Street, North in Oshawa. Store your winter wear today. Go to CareerStreet.ca. Follow them on Instagram, 905-576-7500. Do you think uh, we're also going to talk Aldo? Yeah, our real buddy estate, Aldo. Our buddy Aldo. You want real estate? Go to see Aldo. You got any? You want to sell your house? Buy house. This is the man. This segment brought to you by Aldo at Remax Crossroads. Call 416. Get Aldo. Not only is he the can you find him? Best agent anywhere. He's a heck of a guy. Yeah, great guy. Also, Davy Auto Sales, uh, cleanest, best used cars anywhere. 99 Blur Street, East Oshawa. Call 905-720 cars. Visit DavyAutoSales.com. Call Jeff and his team today. Everybody drives Davy. Yeah. You think? Uh, you think Aldo can find uh, find somebody if they were interested in a little bungalow in Boston? In Boston? You think so? What? Huh? Teddy wants to go there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, Teddy wants to go to Yeah, man, maybe we'll find him a one bedroom somewhere, a basement apartment. Hey, Teddy, terrible Teddy, man. We love you, buddy, man. Love Hang you. in there, buddy, you know, man. Teddy, I know it's hard being a Bruins fan in Southern Ontario. It's hard being a fan of anybody in Southern Ontario. It's hard being, but then, you know, then again, I, wonder, I always wonder why would somebody be a Bruins fan in Southern Ontario? Uh, I don't know. Like, so, you like going against the flow, I guess. Yeah, so, uh, some, you know, right away, something wasn't right for my kid, man. But who knows? We'll let, we'll let Teddy get away with that kind of stuff. We love you, Teddy, man. I, I did keep fighting. You know what? I did make a comment about, about Kadri, and, and, and I don't know if I, we followed up on that, but you know, uh, uh, in, if you watch that game, if you watch that game over again, game two, okay, when he got face washed, tackled by uh, uh, DeBrusque, he got uh, 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 knee on knee hit from DeBrusque, then he watched, you know, the classiest guy, one of the classiest guys in the NHL, 20 year veteran Pat Marlowe get smashed and then the stanchion by DeBrusque, he watched all that unfold, and he, and he saw the rest were doing nothing. He finally said enough was enough. Gave him a two-hander in, 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 in the face and knocked a couple of teeth off. Two things. Did he get teeth? Uh, maybe. I think he maybe he got a chiclet, eh? Yeah, yeah. So uh, two things I want. Uh, one is, is to the public, to the media, to everybody else, Mike Babcock has said, you know, everybody on that team has to be more disciplined. You can't give people a two-hander in the face. And yeah, of course, you can. But on the other hand, somebody has to stick up. I mean, the, the reason that the reason that guy that game got out of hand is because the refs allowed it to get out of hand. And what happened in every game since then is being called tight. Okay, and that nece hasn't necessarily helped the Leafs, but it's opened up the game. It's opened up the game. It's it, because it's, it's, it has it, it, what it has is it's kept the Bruins from mugging the Leafs. All right, it's open. It's just one of the ways the Bruins can win, right? Right, right. It's opened up the it's opened up the game, so they're playing hockey. Right. Now, it hasn't helped the Leafs because the Bruins are getting. Are, are getting more complex than the Leafs are. But it, 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 it has, it, in the sense that it's opened up the game, that probably has helped the Leafs because they, they know they can go up there and have their trade without having to worry about getting caught. What was the. And DeBrusque is being put in a but the brush, the brush, the brush actually, the brush is, uh, frankly, mad. Bruin fans will tell you themselves he's been invisible since game two. But yeah. what's the what's the only game that was uh, that was uh, completely uh, one-sided? Game two, game two, right? And the only reason it was one-sided is because Bruins played. Bruins took it to the alley, and we know the Leafs don't play in the alley. You want to play hockey? Leafs probably beat them an eight out of ten series. You want to go in the alley? It's probably the other way around. It's that simple. So, well, how is the game going to be called? How is the game going to be played? If Boston had their druthers, they'd like to go. To the alley, but the NHL wants talent, like you say, and they want to keep they want to keep the game officiated properly. So that's what the series has turned out to be. If I'm now, what's the uh, what's a coach's name? Out of Butch? Butch. Bruce. 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 Butch Cassidy. Eh? Butch Cassidy. Yeah. So anyways, if I'm this guy, you know what I do? I don't care if I take five, six penalty man. I turn I turn game six into a war. I turn I don't care referees, I don't care whatever. They take five or six penalties at least. You know you know what? I turn game six into a war, that's the best as a Bruins fan, that's the best chance I got. You turn it into a war, it's a game of special teams, up and down. Maybe the Leafs get a little bit rattled, you don't know what happens. Because if you want to skate with Toronto, Boston, you only put the only way you get the only way you're gonna do that is probably next year in preseason, right? Alright, man. So there you go, Leafs and Six, man. Right? Leafs and Six, right? I again if, 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 so that's what it called the that's what it called the rich. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Say Leafs win it four two. 
Yeah, you know, you know what, Tilly, like we said, uh, hockey, uh, especially playoff hockey, uh, predicting uh, uh, predicting what it looks like. And before the Greek uh, rejuvenated in career, you know, he was uh, he had his hand in a little bit of a uh, little bit of professional gambling. Like, you know, it was a pretty. Uh, and I'll tell you what, if I was gambling on this series, or if I had a vested interest other than love, I'd have a headache. I can't predict tomorrow. I can't see the future. I have no idea what the team is going to show up. But you know what? When I go home, aside from this, I don't care what you guys think. I'm putting on. In my heart, I got the Leafs. I got the Leafs in my heart. I love. I love them to win, man, and move on. Because uh, if you look at the rest of the Eastern Conference, you know what it is. The highway's wide open. Man. Who the thought? Man? Who the thought? Tampa Bay got uh, Washington. Uh, maybe on life support. Uh, Malkin got in four. Uh, who else am I missing? Boston. See you later if, if we can get Game Six, man. You know. Imagine I told you a couple months ago that the last four teams in the Eastern Conference would be Toronto, Columbus, Islanders, Carolina. You would have checked me for a fever. You would have sent me to Cam H. You say, hey, buddy, but this guy's not all there, right? Yeah. So the beauty of sports, especially in a salary cap league, right, that there's parity. Although I have been saying all along, you whatever you think is going to happen in the Just throw, throw it out the window. Throw it out the window, right? out the window and, and it's just the way it is. It, it, this is not what anybody predicted. This is not what like, I, I did a bracket. Columbus, Boston, but anyways, yeah. let's let it go. Our buddy Wayne, that old Wayne. Yeah, yeah, Wayne. He's got a. He likes a. He likes Toronto and the That would be a half Eastern Conference, given given the Johnny T factor, eh? That'd be some good theater, eh? Well, I mean, I don't like to look ahead too much because uh, yeah, Columbus is over. No, but if the Leafs are, or if the Leafs are, uh, if they do win tomorrow, they do this for the series. Uh, they got a real good shot against Columbus. Hold on, whoa, whoa, you smile. So if uh, hold on now. No, listen. Columbus is, they, they right. won their Stanley Cup. All right. They no, knocked out Tampa. No, no. They got way up here to knock out Tampa. How would you, what would you say? What, hold on, let me finish it. Open up the mind a little. Listen to the group. Don't ever roll your eyes at the Greek again, John. All right. So if Tampa Bay uh, uh, beat Columbus in four and the Leafs were playing Tampa, what would you say? You'd say, you know, Black Man's going to be a tough series. Right? Think about Tampa Bay 130 points, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the team that you'd imagine is Tampa Bay at 130 points just got smacked around by Columbus. So you have a smile when you play Columbus. Ooh. Right, 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 right. You know what? Okay. They just beat the best team in the world yeah, four no. games straight. So you it know is, what? It is matchups, okay? It's bad matchups. Yeah. Right. And if they match up good with Tampa Bay, who's a skating it, it, team, no, right? Listen, you, you, it's the same thing. They play a heavy game, you know, same thing in boxing, okay? Yeah. Buster Douglas knocks out Mike Tyson. Yeah. There are probably 20 guys that Tyson knocked out that would have been done. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I got you. I understand. It's, it's a way to have it. But matchups, it's, it's, they're, they're mitigating factors. If it's, ma if it's matchups, right, as you suggest, which I agree with, right? Yeah. Uh, do not Toronto and Tampa Bay play a similar brand of hockey in terms of skill forwards? Yeah, but it's not, no, that, it's not that simple. It's but do they not, not play the same kind of game? There are there are similarities, but it, but it is big similarities, it's right? In terms of the offensive way they play, and you know what, Columbus, Columbus manhandled that Tampa Bay team. They manhandled them. They shut them down. They beat them physically. Columbus is a strong team, and he has got Grinch looking forward to playing Columbus like we got in the bag. You know yeah. what? I would say. No, yeah, I, I don't it think easy. anybody thinks. And nobody thinks. I don't think. I don't think it's in the bag. Yeah, I just think probably. they have a much better chance against Columbus than they would have if Tampa had as far Columbus. Yeah. yeah that, and and uh, I, I think I, I really think that Columbus has already won their Stanley Cup. You think so? By beating Tampa, they you are. Think Tortorella's, they, they, Tortorella's won a ring. Yeah, man. You yeah, think yeah. It's that simple? It, yeah, but it's not. It's not just Tortorella. It's, it's an entire team. Yeah, but there's a lot of pressure. It starts from the coach. Yeah, yeah, it does. Right? You think that's and, enough and you for got, them? Yeah, it would be good because you got two coaches both won the Stanley Cup. So if you're, if you're, it's going to be a heck of a matchup if it gets to that. Because again, we are not quite there yet. No. Uh, uh, oh yeah, by the way, yeah, yeah, we're going to switch gears here. We're going to talk about Good Friday in Toronto, which, which turned out to be Great Friday in Toronto. For the first time in history, the Leafs, the Raptors, Toronto FC, the Jays, the Marlies, and the Toronto Wolfpack all were on the same day. So what? For the rugby team. Rugby, rugby team? Yeah, yeah. What were the odds on those guys? Where were they? Well, on the run. The win, the win yesterday? The Wolfpack is his, uh, his best team in the league. So, the so they were a heavy favorite. Yeah, so, if I, so if the Saints the Greek turned back to Toronto, Toronto and Z, but they had a couple behind them. Yeah. 
by the way, let's turn back the clock. Our buddy Aldo, who's tuning in right now, we love you, Aldo. Send Leafs and Six from the Gecko, Aldo. Yes. Yeah. You guys hang a lot. Too. You guys got the same brain. I guess I'm gonna sit this one out, man. Good call. Uh, let me ask you something. So if we had that 16 parlay, I mean you, man. What you know? You took that that money that you hide under the mattress. You know where you keep the 20s, man, right? And we took a couple of those 20s and put them on those six games. What, what do you think that would have paid? Huh? 16 parlay would have made a couple bucks. Huh? 100 to 1, 200. It's never happened before in the history of Toronto sports. Four of them winning on one day. Never. Ever. Like, so it was, it, was a, it was probably the uh, the most beautiful day for anybody that loves their uh, sports. It's Toronto. Toronto, Ontario sports. Yeah. Yeah, and which yeah. one was the most surprising from your end? The most surprising. Hi, love. Hi, Billy. Hey. Billy loves to talk, uh, eh? <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Yeah, like We're live here. He's more than clock. Okay, I'm not saying anything that's not true. Even though they, they, they're the defending coach. Right, Tilly? The Marlies. The Marlies. The big victory. 4 1 victory in Rochester. The team that's ranked right ahead of them and that finished ahead of them. So, how about your, how about your blue chase that we've thrown under the bus, man? Winning in Oakland. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey? That, yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's pretty close, too. right? Yeah, but you know what the thing is? The Leafs are clear. Their chase are coming off three, three, winning three and four games. Hey, Minnesota, who's got a bad club? This is. They're not, last time I checked, they're up 9 nothing today. Yeah. Oh, so you know what? Well, maybe maybe we both sold them a little short. But again, it's still learning. It's still April, right? But but scary news today. So man, it's all Matt Shoemaker again with the club. Yeah. Like so what are you saying? The, uh, the Cy Young season's uh, got to shit. Maybe for, for, for sure. Eh? Uh, yeah. Probably. Yeah, you know what though? Stroh's gonna pick up the slack. Yeah, it was nice to see him. He pitched. Yeah, a, you know what? I'm off. I'm off the bed back. Stroh wagon. That's yeah. Sure. Yeah, he pitched a good game. He pitched a good game yesterday. Actually, yeah. you know what? Um, it's gonna be an interesting year for uh, for the Blue Jays in terms of what they do with Stroh. We talked about it before. If that's the Strowman, if that's if that's the Strowman that moves forward, you can bet you can bet your bottom dollar that in, in a pitching start MLB, everybody's looking for a guy like that. You know, and there'll be there'll be many offers for him, and and, and Strowman can turn into two. Three Three like uh, uh, blue chip prospects instead of some of the guys they've got in recent trades, right? So again, e either way, if he pitches good, Blue Jays might might uh, take a sniff around 500. Yeah, um, yeah. But, and then, or or they or you know they what? Could, they might even slip above. But they might even you know. If don't they, say wild card listen, because listen, I'm going to leave. If it comes into September, they're, 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 they're relaxed. Relax. Listen, if, if they get into September and they're in the wild card hunt, that's going to be interesting. Let's see what they do. But uh, another thing too, uh, is, is, is the question everybody's asking is when does Vlad get called? Vlad gets called up. I'm looking for the. I'm looking for. Uh, originally, uh, there's a possibility that Vlad might get called up to play in Anaheim. Where's that play from? The once uh, so we're talking in a couple of days. That's a, this what Tuesday. That's a. That's a, that's a, that's Monday or Tuesday. I haven't checked the. I haven't checked the blue, the blue day schedule. So when you're bringing up a guy, here's what you factor in, Tilly. Yeah. You factor in um, number one. You factor in familiarity, man, he sees his dad played there, so it'll be something special. For number two, it's a warm climate, Southern California. You know, he's coming from Buffalo. You don't want to put a guy first time, first time out there, you don't want to run him out in 30 degrees in Minnesota or somewhere. Right. The guy pulls a hammy or an oblique and he's out for two months, right? right? Anaheim, you know how it is right now? You should, you, you visit all these places. Yeah. It's about 80 degrees and sunny, right? right. So, Greek looks for him to come play, uh, come play, uh, join, the, join the Jays on uh, Tuesday, what, Wednesday. Tuesday or Wednesday, unless, Unless uh, Atkins and Shaparo want to get those uh, their greedy little hands on an extra draw at home, right? Yeah, so that would be the only thing because if you wanted to draw at home, you'd hold back for a couple of days yeah, until you got back. You, right? you know what would be better than a draw at home? Is to, uh, if this team ends up sweeping, see if they sweep over, then they go on Anaheim. You want to keep that momentum going, you bring the kid in. Absolutely. It gives you your kid yeah. you know, yeah. you, you got momentum, you bring somebody in, and all of a sudden, it's weird in sports. Yeah, You'd imagine. Can. You know what? Remember, we don't want to go back to, but remember when we were talking off, both off air and on about how the Leafs, how beautiful they were playing in, in the first first half of the season, right? And we were all talking about Nylander, we're going to get into that again, and how we're looking forward to him adding to the chemistry, adding off board, how we projected the Leafs to look with an addition given how good they played. And they stuck up the joint for a little bit. That wasn't hell as well, right? But you just don't know. We assume that they'll be better. But they can go out and lose five of the next six. You don't even know, right? Sports. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sports, Sports, right? It's a funny way of right? it, it is unpredictable. Even though we think we know something. Okay, now we got to get to the Raptors. Yeah. Uh, their series with the Magic. Oh my God, the, the, the hand wringing when they lost that first game. Yeah. You know, and, and, and uh, since that time though, you know, the big players have been. I mean, Lowry had his first. He's done it in, in, 
game one, but you know what? He's really, he is really he's risen to the occasion. Uh, you know, uh, Leonard's been away from expect 38 points in game two. Uh, another, what do you have, uh, 30 points in the second game? game no, 16 points, but he had uh, 10 rebounds. Yeah. And, and Siakam, he's been the story. You're talking about him. Yeah, Siakam, Siakam in, in, in many respects, Siakam, uh, the dynamic between Leonard and and, uh, and Siakam. Siakam's a little younger, but Siakam, um, I'll, I'll make the case, and I'd argue that in comparison to Leonard, just just as player to player, obviously Leonard, Leonard is more developed, he's more savvy, he knows how to get his shots, he knows how to find areas of the court, he's been around for a while. But Siakam is superior to even Leonard athletically, he's got a motor that never stops, and for a young guy that's uh, just developing, coming from uh, from the G League, he's got an unbelievable skill set, even down low post, isn't that developing a jump shot? So for me, if I'm starting a franchise tomorrow and I got to choose between Leonard and Siakam, I think Siakam today is the better player, the better player. Now, who's the better winner? Who's a leader? Who's got who's got a uh, who's got the record? The, the intangibles. Because if you watch Kawhi play, skill. If you watch Kawhi play, you can tell Kawhi's play with San Antonio. Sometimes Kawhi is not as explosive, obviously, as a lot of guys, he's methodical sometimes, and he's got a lot of like, uh, Tim Duncan-esque moves around the bucket, even though he plays a different position, right? He looks sometimes mechanical when he gets a shot, a shot off, right? Whereas Siakam, uh, Siakam is an athlete, and the, the few, actually, you know what, Siakam, the Greek would compare Siakam is, uh, is oh, this much or this much be, uh, behind uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, same kind of player, man. Same, yeah, same, yeah, kind, same kind of, exactly, same, kind of same kind of player, but obviously Giannis has a little, is, is slightly more athletically inclined. Yeah, slightly, he's, he's just got more experience. He's, he's not only more experience, a little, little longer wingspan, different presence, yeah, yeah. and maybe it's just a perception. If you change uniforms and put Antetokounmpo in, in Pascal's body and switch it the other way around, you don't know because we're always, as sports fans, influenced by the media bias of what we believe is really happening. Giannis, no matter what, I say the name, you say one of the greatest. Siakam's come from nowhere. He's unknown, but the bottom line is that he might he yeah, might he might he might develop the consistency that Giannis has now. Yeah. The only the only thing holding it the only thing again that holding Siakam back is a perception. Is he wasn't highly regarded. He wasn't drafted, you know, when you come from the G League, right? You know, you're thought of differently. You're always thought as an underdog, you're thought of as a project. You're not thought like the Greek like a blue chipper, right? And that plays on people's heads, but make no mistake about it. Siakam and Leonard together, if Leonard decides to stay, leave the leave the Raptor franchise in a good state uh, for the next 10 years, right? And as for this year in the playoffs, Joe, we said uh, game one to come out flat, not come out flat, but just uh, Orlando, Orlando, Orlando won the game. So what was the difference between one, two, and three? Well, Augustine was allowed to do yeah. one, yeah. two, one. And, and two, Lowry, three, they shut him down. So, so, so Lowry was a better player. So like me and you do the show together, if you talk 30, 40, 50 percent of the time, right? And you uh, and you stumble and fumble and mumble. Man, we're gonna have a bad show, even if the green hits 50 jumpers, even if it's the other way around, right? If you got the ball in your hands and you're Lowry, you got the ball in your hands the whole game, basically, right? You're the point guard, man, right? So if you got the ball in your hands, and with this Raptor team, the only thing that you cannot do is a liability. All you gotta do, like, like, uh, like, uh, like Lowry, you hit a few threes, an open look, you know, 10 assists, 12, 14 points is not a liability. If he, if, if he continues to play the way he does, he doesn't have to be great. He just can't be bad. He can't be bad. You want the guy that's, that's got the ball in his whole hand to have a shitty game, bad game? Raptors can lose against uh, against anybody, so right? That, 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 that's happened in the playoffs past, right? That, you've seen the playoffs past. But when, when, when Lowry's been bad, they've got nobody to pick up the slack. Right? Yeah. And, 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 and in game one, they almost won despite the fact yeah. that Lowry was quite bad. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he's a better player than that. But, uh, Sorry, we just wanted to get this out in all fairness to, to Kyle. People people both with Greek is close to and in the note uh, suggest that, and, and I believe that myself, that Lowry's dealing with back issues, that Lowry hasn't been healthy all year. So when so when I question Lowry or when I say you need more from him, I factor in that, that other guys facing similar physical issues, all of Vince Carter 10 years ago in, uh, in game five against the Pistons, or again, what was it, game seven? I don't even remember. No, Against the Pistons, yeah. the elimination game, Vince was on the bench. Anyways, other people, uh, other people uh, that are not of uh, uh, Lowry's ilk, 
would be sitting, wouldn't even be playing with some of the physical discomfort. Yeah, he's so, a dog. Yeah. So you know, you can even see the way the way he uh, the way he lifts off the ground, the way he drives to the hoop. You can tell he's playing at 60, 70 percent, right? And you just want the guy to hit hit a couple of shots, get his confidence going, right? And you don't need him to be uh, you don't need him to be an all star. No, but you don't. You can't have him be a cheap leader. And uh, right, right now I'm, I'm thinking this, this is over five. We, we thought it would be a pretty yeah. serious most like it's going to be five. Uh, and then it's a six. That'll be interesting. Yeah, it'd be a good series. But the Raptors. Are like Here's the deal. Here's what you're looking for. In the Eastern Conference, I believe, again, we've said this, and I'm I'm heavily leaning towards the uh, representative of the Eastern Conference, as much as I love the Raps, right? My, my crystal ball says the winner of the Celtics uh, Bucks represents the Eastern Conference. I'm very scared of the, uh, especially if you watch Boston, the, the way they play, the way they've dominated Indiana, who is a far superior team than Orlando, make no mistake about it. They, they beat them three straight, and Boston, Joel, Joel. There's, there's two things about Orlando you got to remember. One, they were 22-9 down the stretch, okay? 22-9, and they were the top 10 defensive team. They're not, nobody, I wouldn't say that Indiana's been so, it, it, over this course, of the season yet yeah, they're better than they're uh, better maybe than not so much Indiana the last half of the season you gotta be Tilly, Tilly in terms of they were tough team in terms of depth Tilly you gotta be extremely I'm telling you man, I know what I'm talking about you got I didn't say what I do yet I'm leaning but you gotta be heavily heavily concerned with a Boston Celtic team that finds its groove that has Irving that has that has that has a roster that have that have role players that have depth they got six seven eight nine guys, right? And they got winning pedigree come playoff time. Milwaukee look out because if they beat Milwaukee, they're going to beat us. I'll tell you that. If they beat Milwaukee, they're going to beat us. We'll see. We'll see. I'm telling you. I, I'm not so convinced. Okay? We'll have to toss that break away. But before we go, I just want to say uh, a big shout out to our buddy Tommy Gunn. Yeah. You hear our promos, that's uh, Tommy's music. He's the man. Tommy, you're the man. Rock and roll, baby. 420, big Tommy. Yeah, yeah big yeah. release, buddy. We enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number one, we thank you for, for coming on board. We thank you for your support. We love you. And, and again, your, your creative expression and the way you come to life, man, is, is something that, you know, it's something that, that we all enjoy. And, and, and thank you for uh, thank you for, uh, for uh, just even uh, associating your name and your brand with Gilly and Billy, man. All the best, brother. Yeah, thank you. New album, 420. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Be good. 420 today? Yeah. Did you, uh, did, did you celebrate? No. No, hey, Gilly, you don't do that kind of stuff, no, hey? No, no, hey? No. Not my thing. Uh, you're mature. Not your thing either, thank God. Man, you're mature in the <laughs> old age. You're crazy, you're crazy enough as it is. Holy Jesus. If we had uh, if we had uh, in, 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 in all drugs and alcohol. Oh, man. Uh, by the way, TFC in their victory last night. A couple behind winner yeah. Minnesota. Uh, Jordan Hamilton, a little Scarborough boy. Yeah. Good Scarborough boy had two goals. And Alejandro Pozuela had the other two goals for uh, Toronto FC. And, okay, so, it's the Tilly and Billy show. Big draw. Hey, Celebrating whoa. the opening of the uh, third row season of Woodbine, which is today, April 20th. Now, uh, the winner, lunch or dinner for uh, for four for the famous Post Parade Dining Room in Woodbine, or the Terrace Track Side Box at uh, uh, Woodbine Mohawk Park. Uh, the Queen's Plate, by the way, is Saturday, June 29th. For Harness fans and Pepsi North American couples coming up June 15th in Mohawk. Now, to enter, you just had to be here at the Corner Bank, know the, the Goldberg, which was his best yet. And today, by the way, was uh, opening day at Woodbine. The whimsical stake, six furlongs for uh, Phillies and Mares, was won by Shaka P. Town from Louisville. Yeah, Louisville. Louisville, eh? Louisville. Yeah, absolutely. So coming from Louisville to take all Greenwood's money, eh? Yeah. Eh? yeah. It was out of towers, eh? First. Uh, good for Shaka P. Yeah. Town, but don't come back. Yeah, they don't get the... Yeah, eh? Yeah. Absolutely. Who's the winner, Tilly? Draw okay, the winner. The winner off camera. We, we draw the winners. Uh, the winner was drawn earlier. It's James Jang of Toronto, who frequents the uh, corner bank. Oh, yeah? Regularly. James Jang, you have won a dinner for four. Congratulations, Jim. Uh, yeah, hey, hey, that, that does it. We're going to be back live again on Wednesday uh, at uh, Winter Park. Yeah, absolutely. Classic Grilla Bar in Oshawa. Uh, we want to thank everybody for joining us. And, uh, uh,
Yeah. Before before we before we sign off, just a couple words for me to you. Uh, happy Easter. Pass over to to those of you that, uh, especially the, the uh, some of the Jewish lawyers that have represented me in traffic court over the years. I love you guys. Happy Passover. Happy Easter. And we we thank you very much for uh, for spending time with us, allowing us to come into your lives and and, and sharing the, sharing these moments with us. So all the best to, to each and all. Okay. Thank you and, and take good care. All right. See you soon. Thank you.